one of the times when technology is interesting or when it's exciting is when it feels a bit magical. Part of the whole project is to explore the emotional impact of technology. You know, I mean, telling these stories, telling the narratives through means that you don't regularly see on stage. I mean, I suppose what we're really trying to do is see what the limits are of the world that we're trying to create, what is possible and what's not possible. What does the screen mean in relation to the virtual, the real space and the virtual space? How do they collide or interact? We're experimenting with the relationship with what, what is real and what is uh, fictional. We've chosen this path to do much more experimental storytelling because of where we've come from and because we like the way that it makes people think. We are at a real historical moment. I think it's really interesting to look back to a previous crisis or moment of massive change and the stories that were circulating, the hopes and the dreams, and see what's similar and what's different to those moments. And we wanted to deal with the idea that at the end of the Second World War, there's a kind of new moment for Europe. And, and it's a very optimistic moment in a way, a very idealistic moment. And we're at another moment in European history when things seem to be falling apart a little bit. I think what we're looking at, we're looking at structures that might involve people looking back to where their parents or grandparents' generation have come from. I like to think about where my ancestors would be in this kind of script and how we have to control what we bring into it and not make it too modern. And I think by looking back and looking at our present situation, we may be able to rethink what directions we're going in. It's storytelling, it's always about storytelling, and that is about people and who we are. And that will, I think, never change, but the way we do it changes all the time, and you've got to be ready to, to move with that. I think the real challenge here is to try and find something in the theme of what we're exploring that actually matches the uh, form that we're delivering. We've made some things that look interesting and exciting, but the, in terms of making a show, making a piece of performance that people want to sit and watch for an hour or longer. You can't just have some cool tricks. We need to have a reason for doing this. Why are we using this technology as a, as a metaphor for what we're talking about? I think that feels like the challenge now. Why do this for this subject matter or for this show? Is this show the right vehicle for that? To me, it's providing a disruptive moment for the audience, so it disrupts their normal view of things. And does it elevate their understanding of the dialogue and what's happening? And I think doing it for those reasons is reason enough. It's more about now and how we look back, which is what I think this technology can really do, because I think it can create this sort of nostalgia and memory really, really excitingly. And then how these different stories connect to tell a story that means something to us in 2019 to 2020. There's been moments where I've been sat there going, this isn't going to work. We've done a lot of work with green screen, but not in this three-dimensional way. I imagine it as playing for two spaces. It's been a totally new process to me. I don't think I've done a process before that's been so genuinely research and development. We're putting a collective headset around an entire audience. It's not supposed to be alienating. The technology is supposed to draw the audience in. And then there's been classic light bulb moments of, ah, oh, we're going to be OK. This is going to work. Basically what we're doing, we're translating a gaming rig into a live theatre scenario. So we've got these boxes in the corner of the stage here and they're firing out infrared lights. We then have tracking pucks and controllers headsets which are picking up the infrared light. That information is sent back to Unity which tells it where the camera is, completely in 3D, its angle, its location. But also there's another puck which locates a performer or a number of performers so we know where they are in the virtual space. All that is mapped together to make sure that the virtual space moves as the camera moves, backwards, forwards, rotational. We are then putting that feed of a room that moves in 3D together with a feed of the actors on a green screen so that they can be in any space they want to be in and we're making them sort of very different locations, a different feel. It's like watching a three-dimensional graphic novel. We're trying different things but quite quickly you come to learn what works and what doesn't work. I mean the close-up draws you into the actor's interior. That's the function of the close-up in film and now we can do that in the stage space. Just the simplest thing, how do you put your hand on a window? Trying to work out how do you put your hand out and it looked like you're pressing against a physical space that doesn't exist, but you know it exists in the virtual space. 
it's still a learning curve and to believe that this is theatre of all things is just otherworldly. It's a style of performance because it's not one or the other, it's both at the same time. So it's not all about key presses and you know, sort of like hitting your mark. It's more about, okay, let, let's see what happens. Let the actor adjust and walk around something as the whole environment shifts around them. So the possibilities of technology feel really, really, to a certain extent, we don't really know yet what, what the limits are of what we're capable of doing here. Yeah, I definitely think we can make something happen, but I don't necessarily think this is it. The three-dimensional green screen is necessarily the it place we'll stop. I think we'll always be pushing out some sort of boundaries and testing some sort of possibilities with this technology. You know, we're storytellers, so it's what environment is best suited to the stories that we want to tell with the audiences that we want to communicate with. As a technology, it's got amazing potential. We could go quite far with this. What's next is how we can make all of that happen in a robust system, bringing all those bits together to make a performance work every night, you know, night after night. It's always exciting to see an audience who've maybe never seen anything like this before, who engaged by what they've seen and understand a new way to watch theatre. It's been a great collaboration with the Imitating the Dog guys. Between us, we've said, right, you handle the video. So that's taken the headaches of that away from us. We're purely handling just the virtual stage. And that together, you know, the past couple of days, everything's just clicked together. And it's just come to life and it works. It's been a completely different production environment, you know, sort of coding on the fly. It's been really exciting. I've really enjoyed it. It's been an incredible experience, to tell you the truth. It's a marriage of creative techniques and approaches. And I think it's exponentially, on both sides, made us think about what's possible with this kind of approach. And that, that's been quite something. I think what's new on this, for us, is everything that Inspiro have brought to the project. I mean, we've, we've worked with green screen before, we've worked with cameras before, we've worked with live streaming. We've only ever worked in sort of two-dimensional environments. It's literally added a whole new dimension to it. You know, we are now working in, in kind of 3D spaces. And there's something really freeing about that. And working here at Inspire has been, you know, just brilliant. It, it would be very difficult to do a project like this without a week like this. It would be too risky. You learn a lot more about your role on camera as well, but just by being behind it, how you can help each other out. None of us can do it without the other, you know. It's a true collaboration. <laughs>